that drive into left center field. That ball is going to be out of here. It's gone. It's 7-15. There's a new home run champion of all time, and it's Henry Aaron. Today, Today. I consider, I consider myself, myself the luckiest, the luckiest man, man on the face, on the of, the face of the earth. Gibson swings and a fly ball to deep right field. This is going to be a home run. Unbelievable. A home run for Gibson. And the Dodgers have won the game. Five to four. I don't believe what I just saw. I Corks one in the right, down the line. It may go. Go crazy, folks. Go crazy. It's a home run, and the Cardinals have won the game. Little roller up along first. Behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight, and the Mets win it. This is WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Thursday afternoon, 4.02 p.m., and this is WHPC Sports Talk here on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Oh my goodness, we witnessed baseball history last night. That is why we played the baseball intro today, and I want to get right into that. But first, I am Matt Leonard. I am joined, all as always, by Joshua Yumahi. How are you, Josh? Let's go, Mets. Yes. <laughs> That's all you can say yes. on a day like today. Just let's go, Mets. Oh, but what do you think I meant by history? Eduardo Escobar's walk-off was like oh, historic. Oh, right? right. What do you think I meant? <laughs> what other history could have been made yesterday? What? Like, I really I have no idea. We should have Nico cover that segment. We'll get to him. <laughs> Brayden Daniello, how are you? L F G M. Let's I'm go, so Mets. Happy. Let's Thank go. Thank God, Eduardo Escobar. Let, let, let's go. Mets. What does the F stand for? Freaking. Come on. Ah, okay. PG. Let's FCC safe go, Mets. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio Gonzalez, how are you? I'm doing phenomenal. I'm glad to be a Mets fan and only a Mets fan. Yeah. The best team in New York. Absolutely. No other team. <laughs> So ridiculous. <laughs> Nico Eats, what's up? Hi, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> it's New York Rangers. Nico's, Nico's sitting there in the corner <laughs> looking like a jerk wearing a... Tell the people what you're wearing. Pit Vipers sunglasses. I meant on your body. Oh. <laughs> yes. The legendary Jimmy VC. That's not what you're wearing. That's not VC, bro. Twenty fours on. on your body. Oh, my we're talking about VC. So, <laughs> we're talking about VC so much you got him I confused know, with twenty four. I, I, <laughs> how did you do that? I got what him and VC on the mind. You got ayahuasca on the mind. I, I really, how do you know? Who Josh? dressed you this morning? Your mom? How do you not know? Just Where's wait, my mom. Just, oh my god! Shut out, mom. Just wait till you get your Trevino jersey. I miss you, Nico's mom. Oh okay, my what? God, Matt's dad, I miss you too. <laughs> <laughs> if your dad, if you're listening in Ohio, uh, Nico and you gotta have a talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what kind of lives are y'all? Anyways. You weren't here last night, and I'll leave it at that. Y'all yeah, uh, some different things. Man. Yeah, yeah. Could you imagine being a Yankees fan? I actually oh, could God. imagine being a Yankees fan. Couldn't and you could. I, I probably <laughs> could. Have, Matt, actually, what are you telling us? I could imagine it. I mean, it's like a hellscape, Disgusting. but I could imagine. Disgusting. Oh Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, future Matt, Aaron Judge. Hit 61 yesterday. Yes, he did. Unfortunate. <laughs> Every, oh, come on, you. Unfortunate. Tell me why it's unfortunate. Uh, Because I don't like him. <laughs> it's unfortunate because now Steve Cohen has to pay him more. It's yeah. unfortunate because the, the fan that was about to catch the ball yes! saw his it. whole <laughs> life take in front of him. Didn't even need a job anymore. He would have walked away with a million dollars. Dropped That's it. That's so right crazy. Down there. No <laughs> dog in him. No dog. Zero, zero dog. dog. Like, zero, you know why, right? Yankees fan. That's why. Yeah. Zero dog. Uh, zero. zero dog. Unfortunately, for him, Yankee back to the McDonald's. Before. Oh my God! Back to the McDonald's. Wow. Well, for those Yankee fans listening, as 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 Nico said, Aaron Judge at number sixty-one. And for any, for if you're a Yankee fan and you don't know what number sixty-one means, shame on you. And if you don't know, I'm going to tell you anyway. Sixty-one is the American League home run record, previously held by Roger Maris. Now it is tied between Judge and Maris. Judge has one more. He stands alone. Now, I want to get into a debate about, you know, the real home run record. I want to get into that, but this is this is what it sounded like last night if you're a Yankee fan watching the game on Yes. And the 3-2. Drill deep to left field. This could be it. 
see ya! He's done it! Number 61! He's been chasing history, and now he makes it! He and Roger Maris are tied with 61 home runs! All right, so I I don't want to make this a, a, a review session of Michael K's terrible. It wasn't as bad career. as the Babe Ruth call. Oh, the move over, no, Babe. That, you've got tough. company. Yeah, Slide over, Babe. Slide you've over. got company. <laughs> Me on Saturday night. Move Slide over, over, Babe. I need some room. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, just I mean I. I, I hate it because the Yankees, whether you like it or not, have had many iconic baseball history moments, just pure baseball historic moments when they're players. And all these ones called by K are just so boring. <laughs> I give that one a strong, strong C minus. C minus? Okay. Could have done worse. I would go C. He could have done worse. I I'm going so. C with Braden. Nico, what's your grade on Michael K's home run call? Z. Z for C minus. Z for what was coming out of his mouth when he was snoring during the call. <laughs> Yeah, he, he's, Aziz, so you know, like, what? He, he's so boring. He's so boring. I I don't want to bash him too much because, as we know, this is about Aaron Judge. <laughs> but let's bash Michael K, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. The one thing I've mentioned on this show countless times, and Yankee fans, you want to call in and debate me, 516-572-7440. Please call and debate any of us. The man is not good at his job. He's had the job for almost 30 years now. He's not very good at it. The one call I point to is Jeter's final home walk-off, Right? Jeter's final game in Yankee Stadium, walks it off in the 10th. Be a Yankee fan or not, that's an, whether you feel about Jeter the way I do, meaning he's overrated or you like Jeter, whatever. People that hate Derek Jeter, that's an incredible moment in the history of the sport of baseball. Now, Michael Kay's call of that, I, I always refer to it as like the knockoff Disneyland slogan, where fantasy becomes reality. <laughs> so he didn't even sound excited when he called it. Yeah, like Gary would have leapt out of the booth. Yeah, Probably. There'd have to be a net in, in front where the stadium yeah, because Gary would have been jumping out of there. He just didn't sound excited. That's my opinion on it. I would disagree with you guys. I think Michael Kay is the perfect encapsulation of the Yankees as an organization. That's yes. actually accurate. Just bland, yes, corporate, <laughs> boring. They shave their beards over there. I they can't suck. Co- I can't co-sign that. Like it's, just, it's very blank. Josh could not play for the New York Yankees. No, no. <laughs> Watch well, on Facebook Live, ninety point three WHPC. Sorry. <laughs> Y'all see it. Yeah, I think <laughs> honestly, I think the Yankees, they're just still stuck in Seinfeld era. You know what I mean? They're boring. Oh, my God. Like, George just ends up pulling the, the I hear trophy. Hey, cra- George! I hear crowd laughed in the background, yeah. along with this guy's commentating. Just terrible stuff. Very boring, bland. Kellogg cereal type stuff. Oh, God. <laughs> Kellogg cereal. Cheerios, no honey nut, for mm, real. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lack the honey or the nut. Yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Gary Cohen. <laughs> Gary Cohen is the honey nut we all need. Thanks. Yeah, he has the spice. Gary Cohen adds the honey nut to our lives. Just honey nut makes everything better. So honey, 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 honey nut is just the best thing ever. <laughs> there you go. Anyhow. My goodness. Oh my God. Great story. <laughs> we, Maybe great. the caller likes honey nut Cheerios. Maybe the caller likes honey nut Cheerios. I'm not asking them that, though, even though we do have a caller on WHBC Sports Talk. Caller, you're on the air. What's up? Matt, I decided to make it two days in a row. Hi, Eric Fischetti. How Eric. are you? Eric. What's up, dude? What's up, Josh? What's up? I haven't heard from you in a minute. I know. I haven't <laughs> spoken to you since 24 hours ago. That's crazy. N- n- now that I know the caller is you, do you like Honey Nut Cheerios? Uh, they're not bad. I All mean, right, fair. It's ne- honestly, with Honey Nut Cheerios, it's never my first <laughs> choice, but you can never go wrong with it. Thank you. Thank that you. is fair. You can never go wrong with Honey Nut. Okay, well, Eric, what do you want to talk about? More reliable. <laughs> well, first off, congratulations to Aaron Judge. Congratulations to Roger Maris Jr. for for finally being able to go home now. (laughs) (laughs) And honestly, I don't know about you guys, but as as a Yankee fan, as a lover of baseball, I'm happy that Judge got to this point. There's a part of me that's a little bit envious that it happened in Toronto, but now it just sets up for a great, you know, storybook quote unquote ending that it's going to happen back in the Bronx, most likely. Absolutely. I mean, I feel like 61, after he didn't hit it in the Red Sox series, it felt inevitable. 61, at least, was going to come in Toronto. But you're right. 62, if it happens, the Yankee Stadium would be electric. And it's, it's going to be electric, no matter where it happens, because right after the Orioles, season, uh, Orioles series, they're going to go to uh, Texas. So I'm hoping that he you know, breaks the record this this upcoming weekend. But, you know, at, at this point, because the se- – I had an epiphany yesterday, right, right, right after I got off yeah. the phone with you guys, actually. I am at the point where if it happens against Baltimore, 
If it happens in Toronto, if it happens in Texas, I'm ecstatic either way. However, just want to get your opinion. It's Is it really going to mean something if they don't win the World Series? I, I've been saying, Eric, and if you've been listening to any of us, you know we've all been saying pretty much. Aaron Judge, his postseason performance is going to be weighted so much more in this contract year talk with him than anything he does in the regular season. I, I agree. This regular season is going to well, probably one of the best hitting seasons we've seen, at least in our lifetime, one of the best offensive seasons we've seen. But if Aaron well, Judge goes into a slump, let's just say the Astros... In worst case scenario, Astros sweep the Yankees out of the CS, and Aaron Judd gets like one hit in the four games. That won't look good, and that's what everyone's going to focus on, rather than the 60-whatever homers he's going to hit this year. Well, it's also on... Now, again, I'm not, I'm not that much older than you, but I was two years old in 1998, so I don't fully remember. My parents didn't know they wanted me in 1998 yet. I was born in 2001. <laughs> they were still negotiating? They were still, oh still talking God. it out. Okay. Really? <laughs> Eric, I was born in 01, yeah. That's crazy. Oh, my God. I forgot about that, dude. Nico, what year yeah. were you born? Oh, four, baby. Oh, that. Oh, my. Who am I in the room with? That's crazy. I, <laughs> I'm 02, so. See, you know, I'm driving. I was about to crash. 2004? <laughs> 2004, <laughs> baby. Nico is the age of my 18-year-old twin brothers, and it scares me, Eric. It scares me every day. <laughs> That's crazy. Listen, guy, I, I just turned 26 the other day, so now I just got to worry about insurance. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm a year away, Eric. I'm a year away. Oh God, right. I I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. Oh, man, y'all are mad I old. Wanna, <laughs> I want <laughs> I want to bring this topic up to you guys, and I'll let you get going because the uh, night is still young and the show is still early. Roger Maris <laughs> Jr. In, in in a press conference yesterday after Judge tied his father said that he still values 61 as the true home run record. Now, going into my point before, I'm old enough to remember the Barry Bonds year mm. in 2001 hitting 73. Steroids or not, Barry Bonds is the true home run king right now, disregarding if the record is tainted. That is the record. I'm not trying to sit here and rewrite history and saying that Maris's record still isn't broken because guys like McGuire and Sosa and Bonds all did it without, you know, them being clean. But Barry Bonds is the true home run king. Now, I'm not saying that he's going to hit 73, but do you guys consider Judge the home run king like Maris Jr. does? Because to me, I respect it. God bless his heart. He reveres his father, but he's not the home run king, but he's writing a hell of a story. If I had to give you my take on that, it's just, look, he's obviously, if he hits 62, he's the American League home run king. That's just statistically true. The American League record is Roger Maris at 61. Now, this gets into the whole debate of steroids in baseball and when those guys took them, they weren't, when Bonds was hitting 73 home runs, the steroids he was taking were not considered banned substances. They are now. Back and then, they were not. Yes, because the stuff he was on wasn't illegal at the time. So I feel right. like, depends on how you look at it, was he, was he, he was following the rules at the time he hit it in 2001. And by today's standard, it's no, but things change all the time. Like, how many of Babe Ruth's home runs are you going to take away because they were ground rule doubles? You know what I'm saying? Like, the rules and changing also, helps these guys right. now, but you can't hurt guys that play under different rules back then. And also, just to give you guys, you know, something else, obviously, uh, when Joe DiMaggio was hitting in 56 consecutive games, how many of them you think were just errors that they just decided to record hits? That's we a good know. point, too. We, we weren't there, and th we'll never know on that one either. So that's a great point, Eric. No, of course not. But, again, congratulations to Aaron Judge. Hopefully this whole season isn't a wash, especially if he leaves, because it's a great possibility that he does. I'm hoping that it doesn't come to that point. But knowing our luck as New Yorkers, He's either going to end up with the Dodgers or the Giants somehow. Or, if he does stay in New York, it's either going to be with the Mets or the Yanks. And I really think in that order. Because if the Mets Ooh. are going to set out that money, especially if they lose Jacob DeGrom, don't be surprised if Aaron Judge uses the New York Mets as leverage. That would be very interesting. I feel like we saw it last all season and one, one prior, definitely. Players using Steve Cohen's endless, it seems, stream of cash to drive up the price for where they really want to go. We saw it with George Springer. Springer got that big deal with the Blue Jays because the Mets drove up the price. He never even wanted to go there. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? If anybody's got the money and they really want to pay a judge, they're going to do it. But this is just the last thing I'm going to say. The Yankees 
are now in a position where they cannot let this guy leave. Mm, I would right. probably say at one point in the beginning of the season before opening day, you could probably say, oh, you know, Catherine shelled out a pretty fair offer for Judge. Oh, my God. Did Aaron Judge really prove his worth? The, this guy cannot leave. If the Yankees re-sign him, which I do end up thinking that he'll be back in the Bronx, but I don't know. I'm not as firm set on it as I was earlier in the season. I'm not too sure this time, but I would probably give you a percentage, Matt, that I think it's 60% likely that he's back in the Bronx. That seems optimistic to me. I'd probably go 50-50, but still, it's close enough. And then, you know, Aaron Judge, the Yankees say, need this guy in pinstripes for the long term. As far as the Yankees themselves, the, the franchise, the, the team, everyone needs him to stay. He's the leader. He's going to be the captain if he resigns. It's just only right. And on top of that, how much of an optic is it going to be if this guy breaks, you know, the home run record in the American League and then he leaves? Yeah. I mean, we, we, we saw Stanton was traded to the Yankees of the offseason following him winning an MVP, but this is a whole different level. Oh, it's a whole different level because this is a Yankee chasing a Yankees record, and it would just be very strange because, remember, guys, opening day for the Yankees next year is in the Bronx against the San Francisco Giants. Oh. So you're wondering, oh. Yeah, so you're wondering – you know, what side is Judge going to be on or if he's going to be there in particular. Anyway, that's so that's interesting. My two cents. That's my two cents. Have a great show, guys, and I'll be listening. Thank you, Eric. I didn't even know that was a thing, that the opening days against the Giants at home. Yeah, there's no way that's accidental. You don't think. Oh, there's, there's no way. I, I, I mean, all these, all these sports leagues love to stir the pot like that. Why do you think, um, I mean, this came out before. It's obviously a coincidence with this, but I talked about them. The Jets tour the AFC North, and Joe Flacco played three of them. Yeah. I mean, that's a coincidence, but still, we see it all the time in sports. Or was it? Or <laughs> was it? You know what's funny about the uh, the home run chase and the, the yeah. home run record thing? Um, so, for anybody that doesn't know, I just want to list off. Again, Aaron Judge has the American League record. Tied. Right? Tied for the American League record. He hasn't mm-hmm. had it yet. That's true. He has seven games left to do it. Yes. Uh, three coming up in the Bronx against Baltimore, if they actually pitch to him. So, we'll find out. But let me, let me just list off. <laughs> so... Barry Bonds is obviously number one. Of course, 73. 73. Uh, Mark McGuire, 70 and 98. Uh, Sammy Sosa, when he was dark skin, uh, 1996. <laughs> McGuire, uh, 65. And Sosa twice, again, when he was dark skin, 1999, 2001. 64 and 63. Now, Sosa has three seasons over what Judd is doing right. now. So far. That, that's crazy. So we're, we're, we're calling, and again, this is for people that call it the non steroid record it technically is but also like i said when they were playing it wasn't a band exactly no. but it, it, and it's tough to say that when there's one two three four six single season home run records better than what iron judge has it'd be one thing if it was aaron judge and maris in second and then bonds way up there at 73 you'd be like yeah i can live with that no you're yeah. right though yeah. it's been done six times more than this and that's just i get it was all around the same era when steroids were big it was a steroid era in baseball but yeah you're right it, it's too much to discredit. Yeah, and if yeah, and if you ask me, is this a real record? I, I know people really get up in arms, especially baseball lifers, about the steroid thing. Oh yeah, but it's Barry Bonds' record. I, I'm just going by what it says on the record books. What mm-hmm. actually happened? I'm not going in and changing history how I see fit, which is what a lot of these baseball writers like to oh, do. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We see it with the Hall of Fame discussions. Yes. So I, it's Barry Bonds' record. It is. I know Yankee fans are going to call up and be like, oh, no, it, it's Barry Bonds' record, and there are five other seasons ahead of him. Now, it's a very impressive record. 60 home runs. There's nothing to sneeze at. 61, especially the Roger Maris American League record, is incredible. He might get, you know, like, did I say 60? It's 61. 61. 61, yeah. I mean, Judge could end yeah. with, I could see him ending at 61 if he goes into a slump, but they don't pitch to him either of those. Or I could see him ending at 65. This guy's just, yeah. he's streaky. We don't know what streak he's on. Do, what do you think was more, uh, what would bring more pressure, tying the record or once you have the record already and going on to break it? Which one carries more pressure, tying or breaking? I think now that he's tied, he's going to want to break it, and that's more pressure. We saw it with Pete Alonso when he broke Aaron Judge's rookie record. Alonso had 52. It took him another week to get 53 because he kept swinging for the downs every single pitch. Which not, <laughs> yeah. not much has changed. We'll get to him. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point, though. Like I, But at the same time, it's like I feel like tying it brought more pressure. I you have like, to get to the mountaintop. What do you? What number do you think brought it. the pressure? Well, like 58, 59? 
Because there had to be a certain point where, wait, I'm close. I got this. I think one, yeah, once he got to like 59, he was yeah. like, yeah, uh, I'm right there. there. Yeah, yeah. Because it wasn't like, you know, he had his second home run and he went, I'm going to get 63. It wasn't like that. <laughs> I, I, I see it like he already has tied the record. So he yeah. has co ownership of the record, but it's still ownership, true. right? I, yeah, I think yeah. I think he's playing with house money now. I think so. Okay. Let me give you this analogy. If the Mets and Braves ended with the same record, even if it was a tiebreaker where the Mets would go on to win, right? Right. Would you feel like you won the division fully? <laughs> I'm, I'm asking you a Mets perspective. Well, I'm being Mr. Literal Man today. No, I'm, I'm record, just, so, you know, yeah, I would feel like we won it. I wouldn't, feel like, I, yeah. I wouldn't feel like they fully won. If it was one of those tiebreaker head to head record things, I wouldn't feel like they fully won like they could have beaten the Braves in record months. So, say the Mets and Braves win, both win 103, 104 games. Yes. Exact well, same the, record. The tiebreaker is the Mets won the season series. So how could you not feel like the Mets won it like they won it? Oh, no. I'll, I'll, I'll acknowledge because they obviously did win it. They won it. They beat the Braves enough times to win it. I'm with you. I would feel like it's a bigger victory to me personally as a Mets fan if their record is even one game lesser than the Mets. Okay. I, I, Again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not at all denying it's a division crown. Right. I, I would say hang that banner, rub it in Atlanta's face. Oh, yes. <laughs> hang that banner right up there in City Field. Now they're all way in right and like high up in right field. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But, like they're on the opposite side of the retired numbers. It's a very strange thing they did. But I guess, uh, I, as, as Sean Novot, our director, put it, they're making room for more. Which I like that. They, mm-hmm. they didn't have a lot of room left in that old little ledge. Now there's room for plenty more. Then we got. Steve Coleman's hungry. Maybe there are a few guys on the 2022 Mets who are going to make it one day. More than a few guys. No, we, I mean, I mean the banners. Oh, the, the banners ban- are making room for more. Well, the retired numbers too. That's true. Banners, yeah. absolutely, but yeah. Well, we got a lot of Mets numbers have to be retired, like that are could be any day now. Five's got to be retired. Yes. I have something special on David Wright for later, but five has got to be retired. Eight should have been. Eight should be retired. Yes. A long time ago, but. Seventeen, they did him justice. That's yes. fine. I wish Johan Santana's mess career ended so much better because he I deserved know. to. He deserved to have a number retired, but it, it won't happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. First no hitter right. was the ace for years. That's tough. I, I love how like the, the Mets are that one franchise. That, I've heard people say the Mets don't have any real no hitters because the Johan thing with the fair ball foul ball issue. Yeah. And the combined no hitter was the other one. Oh, the Mets haven't thrown no hitter. Yeah, they've thrown two. Whether you like it or not, they've thrown two. Yep. Uh, contrary to what Noah Syndergaard says, the yeah, Mets yeah, have thrown up, Noah. two no hitters. So Tell Noah, to Noah Syndergaard, <laughs> Noah Syndergaard, the Philadelphia Philly, who I cannot wait to see if we meet in the playoffs. Just no, he might no, not even make the no, playoffs. He'll, he'll, they might not make it. And if they do they make the playoffs, he's going to duck the Mets again for like the fourth time this year. If he does it in the playoffs, he's going to look so spineless and does not deserve a contract again. If he does it in the postseason, I, I really think he has Ben Simmons syndrome when it comes to the Mets. Oh, when my. it comes to the His Mets, back hurts. <laughs> Ben Simmons syndrome, the symptoms are you have back pain. He's going to come <laughs> up with something to duck that matchup, I, I swear to you. Oh, my goodness. I swear to you. Huh, well, I want to get to the Mets in, in just a minute, but I want to I want to finish with the calls. We played Michael Kay's call. This is what it would have sounded like on the radio yesterday if you were listening to John Sterling on the call. Play. Yeah, Dave O'Brien told me the pitch to Stanton. Drill, there it goes. Keep oh, wait, this is the wrong one. Shoot. It is far. It is this is the wrong one. Out of the ballpark. A Stantonian home run. <laughs> now, what, what, did, what did I do wrong? What did I see wrong? He's at first base. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm so sorry, Yankee fans. That was the wrong call. This is the call. And the payoff. There goes Diddy Bluff. It is high. It is far. It is gone. Number 61. He ties Roger Maris for the American League single season record with 61 home runs. It's a two-run judgey and blast. Here comes the judge. <laughs> you, you ain't right, man. You, 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 ain't, you ain't right. You I know what you John did. John Sterling what did I do wrong? messed up for a second. What, what, I what, what, what did I do wrong? Me. I played the wrong call. You never um, know what John <laughs> Sterling, Braden. You never know. <laughs> you ain't right, man. Too much about Stanton was up. Is up. I'm telling you, John Sterling sees just a big imposing presence in the, and right in the batter's box. Here's Stanton. I mean, judge now. What do you think, Susan? I mean, just that whole, you know... <laughs> I feel like John Sterling tries too much, though. It's yeah, like, I, I wasn't the John Sterling. My reaction is just simply, Oh, my good, goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> love Susan. You gotta love Susan Waldman. I live for Susan. <laughs> you live for Susan? I live for Susan. Susan's your reason to keep going? Yes, how? Without question. Every, every morning you wake up and you're just like, Thank you, Susan Waldman, yes, yes, for another yes, day. Yes, for another day. <laughs> you can't predict baseball, Susan. You're absolutely right, Susan. <laughs> you can't predict baseball, Susan. Absolutely. Who knew Aaron Judge? I mean, Carlos Stanton. I mean, I don't know. Babe Ruth's gonna hit sixty-one hours. Oh, let's not make fun of the senile man. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I feel, yeah. I feel like it's not not fun to make fun of. It's not fair to make fun of. It's uh, very ageist. It is very oh. ageist. 
I don't know. I just you're right though. You are absolutely correct. We shouldn't make fun of senile old men. Minnesota! <laughs> wow. We just shouldn't do that. Wow. We shouldn't make fun of senile old men. <laughs> See, I put it on the T guys, <laughs> and Matt Matt did it. He did. Yeah, it's like, it's like the way LeBron, you threw it up and just I, bam. I lobbed it up. You do it. <laughs> John, give us a little, you know, the way he's walking away from the alley oop on the camera. Yeah, we got it. There we go. Yeah. 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 I lobbed it up there. I mean, that's all me. That's all me, everyone. It's all me. It's all me. <laughs> oh, my God. I got that too late, though. I was trying I was find it. Ah, like trying to find it in the fall. Oh, God. <laughs> Um, anyway, though, oh, let's talk about our Metsy, shall we? But let's first, go. you are yes. you are listening to WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College, ninety point three WHPC. Uh, it is Matt Leonard, Josh Umahi, Brayden Daniello, Antonio Gonzalez, and Nico each here with you on this Thursday afternoon. Let's get to our New York Mets. They had a huge, huge win yesterday, and more importantly, the Braves had a huge loss. Both games ended in 10 innings. The Braves ended up blowing it in the 10th to the Washington Nationals. Thank you so much to the Nats for that. And the Mets took care of business. They were down, and Ross said it yesterday. This Mets team just rolls over and dies, and I agree with them when they're down. Eduardo Escobar said, I don't think so. Yeah, you know definitely not. Definitely he, he not. He is. L- let me just read off his stats in September. Please do. Oh, I got him here, too. This is incredible. This is great. Or as Gary oh. called it, the month of Escobar. This guy, mind you, this guy... Remember back on June twenty second, mm-hmm. he was really in a slump. He was really struggling. Mets oh, fans yeah. were on him, calling him oh, and yeah. all the stuff. He's quoted as saying, "One day I'm going to give them the reasons to cheer for me." The fast forward to over two months later, three months later, sorry, three thirty average this month, eight home runs in a month, not even over, twenty four RBIs, ten seventeen OPS. That is. You, you talk about a guy in the New York market that got the brunt of what it's like to not play well in the city. Yep. And then as of late in the last couple of months, especially this month, turning it around. And when the Mets needed them most, man, you talk about if they lose last night's game, you're looking mm. at this upcoming series versus Atlanta totally different. Yeah. Your, Mets fans might be panicking today. They really might be yeah. in full blown panic going to Atlanta, even if it's DeGrom, Scherzer, Bassett. Like, you're, pan- you're, you're, you're uneasy about. The prospects of that series. Absolutely. Yeah. This guy single handedly, five RBIs yesterday. All five runs the Mets scored yesterday, he drove in in huge spots. That that is. Did it in a span of four innings. Four, four Think innings. Think about that. That's crazy. Two run homer, the, the two, two RBI single in the eighth, and then he wins it in the tenth. I mean, I, I'm happy. And listen, everyone was bashing Escobar. I was one of those people, but you can't help but be happy for the guy, especially now. I mean, 24 games, he's an RBI per game. That's incredible. I mean, yes. what Met has gone on a stretch like that this season? We and that's that's the thing, Braden. Too, we've seen Alonzo go on crazy great stretches. Lindor well, yeah, just had up one until recently. last night. Up until last night, right? Yeah. We'll get to that, I'm sure. No. But Lindor, Nimmo, Marte, who's who hopefully we get back before the playoffs. Like the way I'm calling it, this is my favorite Mets team of all time. Really, I, I'm old enough to remember 2006, 2015 was a great ride. But the way this team. Again, it's not always collectively, but individually, just when you're sleep on a guy, he steps up. When mm-hmm. you give him the most, it's been all these guys in the lot. It's been McNeil, who I haven't even brought up. Oh, so McNeil's Mark, been electric since the All Star break. Mark mm-hmm. Canna in August. And you talk about Eduardo Escobar now, after all the stuff he dealt with, and on that topic, too. The amount of Mets fans I saw on Twitter just crying, oh, Drew Smith's coming in. Buck should have put Diaz in for another inning. Oh, Drew Smith's going to blow it. We mm-hmm. just tied the. Well, <laughs> Drew Smith looked pretty, pretty good yeah, in his inning that. of work. I as feel as like, we told the other week that he shouldn't be put in any high level yeah. situations. And, and we were not wrong to say that at the time for the No, record. definitely not. No. I'm not trying to defend us either. I'm going Baz and Drew Smith at that time. I think even Buck was like short on arms, and he's like, "Who else am I going to put in?" Was try and trust this guy. Listen, maybe Buck knew something we didn't. Put him in, and Drew Smith got motivated. Who knows? Buck does know something about each guy. He's a motivator, and the way he just mm-hmm. spews confidence into each player on this team is what's been so different from the Luis Rojas's and the the creepy Mickey Callaways of the world. <laughs> like the the way Buck Showalter has managed. Not yep. only the team, but the players individually. Oh, yeah. And it's all come together. And in a huge game like last night, just this is my favorite Mets team of all time because they've given us moment after moment after moment and like an, this. And another game that probably the Mets would be on the losing end of in past scenes. We talk oh, about absolutely. that all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. To fight, like I said, they've. What I love about this team, and we've touched on it several times, is that, like I said, whenever they get hit, they hit back harder. You saw it last night. I mean, just a, Walker, he did okay. 
I'm not going to bash him too much. You yeah. can't expect much from him. It wasn't it, his fault. They didn't it, score for him early. Yeah. And then they, not that they have to, but still. But the bullpen, not a bad start. Yeah, but the bullpen between Adovino, Diaz, and Smith. The Mets, are, the, how many, like, str- I feel like they've been striking out a lot at home. It was just a couple weeks ago. They had, like, what, 20... One in a game, 22. Yeah. They had, what, nine, 17 or 19 last night? The bullpen last night. I have it here. Oh, boy. Seth Lugo in two innings, three strikeouts. Oh, my. They give up a run, but three strikeouts. Yeah. Ottavino in one inning, two strikeouts. Diaz struck out the side as he usually does. Yeah. We're at eight. Drew Smith, two strikeouts. Ten for the bullpen. That's. How many did Walker have on his own? Eight. So 18 That's, Ks for the Mets pitching staff and, and more in a 10 inning game. Wow. More, more importantly, Adovino, Diaz, and Smith all get the scoreless innings to keep the Mets in it. Because if you, you, you see it all the time when Buck maybe throws out someone like there and they don't perform. Like Drew come. Smith and Milwaukee. Yeah, we watch yeah, it like, on the air. And, and then the game gets blown open and then it, maybe Escobar's runs don't matter. But it was good to see that. And then obviously Escobar giving them just enough offense. So not just enough. I'd plenty of enough to more win the enough. game. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many more RBIs are going to ask from this guy this month. Well, let's just hear how, how the game ended, how it sounded. Oh, with it with the, the incomparable Gary Cohen on the call with Escobar's walk-off right here. And Eduardo punches uh. one through the hole. Base hit. Here comes Lindor. Blade with the throw to the plate. Lindor is safe. And the Mets win it. It's the month of Escobar. Five RBIs, including the game winner. The tenth, and the Mets win it five to four to go a game up on the Braves. I will just say, I know we bashed Michael K before, and I'm not going to go back on that because it's true. But <laughs> that is how you call a big moment, historic or not. That's Gary, how you do. Gary Cohen, Matt, is the eighth national wonder of the world. I'm saying it now. <laughs> I don't care what anyone He's says. He's best in the business. Yes, absolutely. The, the, yeah, I love when they on SNY when they post the booth reactions afterwards. His reaction. That's where get I got this time. from. Yes, it's the greatest thing ever. I love every second of it. Oh, you that, talk about fantastic. a guy. I always say this about broadcasters. Like the best ones are just in love, in love with the sport they're calling. Yeah. Gary Cohen is in love, not only in love with the sport of baseball, but in love with the New York Mets, and somehow manages to keep it unbiased too. Yeah, I agree 100 percent with you, Brady. He's yeah. if you want to talk about broadcasters, especially in Major League Baseball, best of the best of the best. It doesn't get any better than Gary Cohen. I just look. You're right, though. You got to be in love with what you're doing. And Josh, right. you and I have done it for across multiple sports. Oh yeah. You and I have done what Gary Cohen just. I shouldn't say done what Gary Cohen did. We tried to do what Gary Cohen did. Mm-hmm. We did the same job, but I feel like Gary's just the king of this right now. My favorite call. That call's pretty good, but remember the turn those dumbs around from last year? Yeah, oh my god. That, that was that was a great call, but the emotion in that one just encapsulated how every Mets fan felt. <sighs> when Escobar drove that run in. I always wonder, do you think Gary like writes out some of these lines? Do you think Gary would write, you know, if they win, say turn those thumbs to. around? I don't think he has to. That's what I'm to. saying. It's the amazing part. It's all up yeah, here on the fly. Yes. I think he's just that naturally talented where it's like, I walk in Get the mic. It all just comes to his head. Just it's, that's incredible. Yes. We do have a caller on the line, though. Let's get to them. Caller, you're on WHPC Sports Talk. What's up? Uh, hey, I guess who helped out win them, them that game? Ross. Thank, thank, you, thank you for going last night, Ross Levine. Hey, Ross, I have more important question before you get on the topic. <laughs> why, why are you not in Atlanta right now? Well, There's a hurricane. Uh, no, yeah, he has to I'm risk so it all. This is we the, need this is the National League East. Hurricane Schmurricane. Forget about Ross the hurricane. Ross, the National League Ross, East is at stake, Matt. Ross is to the New York Mets as Brian Dable is to the New York Ross Rangers. Is the Ross, Ross, no, Ross, right. Ross, it, Ross Levine is the hurricane headed for Truist Park. Yeah. yeah. my words. There we go. Hurricane Ross, how are you doing, Ross? What's your point, though? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. I, first of all, I have, a, I have a baseball question for you. Sure. I have a fantasy football question for oh, you. Oh, Okay. Don't ask him his team's going to. <laughs> wow. Talk to it, me. It, talk it, to it, it involves Trey Lance. Don't worry. Oh, I'm 2 and 1, baby. I'm 3 oh. and 0. Don't talk to me. All right, Mr. Ayahuasca. Yeah. Let Ross get Perk. his point across. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so my, I'll get the fantasy one out of the way. Who should I start tonight? Tua Tagovailoa or Jared Goff? Oh, Tua. Tua. Jared Tua. Goff. What? Oh, Matt. Stop. Jerry Goff. Stop. Hey, about? hey, that is not to a slander. It yes, is it not. Is. No, it's not. Do you think oh, to his I, I I think actually he's right. Two is gonna feel the injury effect. I'm not even I'm not even joking. <laughs> it's gonna be a one. one. <laughs> there is that. There is two. The Bengals pass rush is no joke. 
It's not exactly his hop in the league, but it's no joke. Tua has not felt with a lot of pressure this year as a quarterback. He has some great games. He hasn't felt a ton of pressure from that spot of the field. Now, I will say Jared Goff strictly based on fantasy rankings. Jared Goff's a top 10 fantasy quarterback. People don't realize the Lions passing attack, especially your guy, Nico, Amon Ross St. Brown, has been a revelation in Detroit. They have a great passing attack going, and Jared Goff's going to go off. Ross, those, those are all great points from Matt, right? But just take into account, yeah. Tua is throwing to Tyreek Hill, and Jay who, he, who is being guarded or is going to be guarded by Eli Apple. That's right. Eli Apple's pissed, Josh. Your buddy, Eli Apple. Ross. Eli Apple is pissed. Oh, oh, Ross, go. don't, don't listen to Matt, Ross. Just don't, okay? Yeah, Eli He's Apple's one and two. Toast. He's yes. terrible at fantasy. Oh. Listen to me and Josh. We have winning records. Tua man two is the guy. Yes, I do. You're two and one? Yep. I'm How pretty no. Two and one. Yeah. Y'all slept on me. I told well, you. I told you. Well, because everybody keeps saying it's going to be a shootout today. So I don't know. That's right. Well, Russ, let, let's just be honest. You're the prophet. You know everything. You call everything. He's right. You, he is you, right. You should have the right. You shouldn't have to ask us this. Ross, I mean, it, you, it, it, whatever you do it, touches turns the gold. You, you and your gut, Ross, who do you want to start? <laughs> Please say Tua. Uh, In your gut. It, well, I have two Lions. I have a tight end, Hawkinson, yeah. and I'm on St. Brown. So. Oh, let's start Jared Goff. That's the answer. No. <laughs> you do not uh, need three Lions, no. Ross. Just start Tua. Don't be silly. Yeah, Come on. no. It, Tua's the safe bet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Watch him get hurt. But, um, Ross, don't uh, say now, that. Now oh, Tua's going to break his that. arm because Ross said it. Uh, Ross no. spoke it. It will be true. And if Ross. it's not too late, pick up Jamal Williams if it's not too late. Oh, oh, all the lions. That happens to every word <laughs> that I take. They get hurt. I don't know why. But <laughs> God damn it. I'm, um, but I'll say this about the New York Mets. I think they will be in a dead even tie going into that last series. I will say that. You saying after Wait. Atlanta? Ooh. Yeah. What that I, means I really is, what that, that means if, if anyone doesn't dig out the math quickly. Now that means Atlanta is going to win two out of three over the weekend. Yes. What you're saying? I think That's there's a good yeah, chance Atlanta could win. I could see it going both ways. I could see either one winning two out of three. <sighs> Whoever wins this series will really determine a lot. It's a three-game no, series. I, it's I, not four. They can't split. This is going to be the biggest series we've seen for the Mets regular season in a very, very long time. And, and honestly, I'll say this right now. Escobar should be the MVP of September. Oh. Without question. He should. He's been that clutch. That's true. Escobar's clutch, and even when he's not getting clutch hits, when he's not up in those situations, he's making good on all these good at bats he's having. He's batting 330, as Josh said earlier. Eight home runs in September. And no one's talking about it. Okay, why do Escobar stinks? That's why no one talks about it. <laughs> right. Yeah, so that. And my final point is, is that I think Alonzo, in terms of the year, he deserves to be a top seven MVP. Wow. So it's been stats alone. Not right now, but stats for the whole year? Yeah, 40 home runs and 131 RBIs. you, you got to put him in that conversation. I've been saying all year, if, if, if any Met deserves any kind of award consideration, it's Edwin Diaz. Mm. Oh, that yeah. guy's been lights out, one of the best relief pitching seasons we've seen ever. Yeah, I, I, I agree. But uh, take care, guys. Uh, I'll see you. We'll see you Monday, Ross. Show. Thank you for the call. Bye, Ross. Start, start Jared Bye, Ross. Goff, Ross. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Start, start Jared Goff over to a... Just, no. You don't think anyone's beating off? What? Beating what? off? Oh, my God. No, no one's going to beat Goff. You don't think so? I, 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 I do not think anybody's beating Goff. Okay. I think you will be, but we'll see. I mean... <laughs> I think I, if, 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 listen, listen. <laughs> All, all, all I'm saying is, if Tua, if Tua has a bad game, certainly. Right. Okay, we'll see about that. I, I, listen, I think Tua's head is, is good now. I think the doctors cleared him out. You're so stupid. And I think we're going I think we're going Tua. I don't know. You're I'm, I'm so going Tua this, this tonight. Man. You're so Tua stupid. Man. Four touchdowns for Tua tonight. Oh Thank you very God. much. I, uh, I, 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 I want to play one more clip on the Mets. <laughs> I have one more Mets clip I want to get to, and then we'll get right into the NFL and some fantasy stuff if we want to. And, and who's going to beat golf this weekend? All right. <laughs> this is uh, Nico. This is your boy Eduardo. After the um, yeah. after after the game, this is an interview by Steve Gales after the game. I feel great. I feel great tonight. It's an unbelievable game. For nothing, you combine again. It's unbelievable. You know, every day coming to ballpark, working hard, respect the game because these people from me right now taking time coming to the ballpark, watching the game. I think it's why I'm so happy now. So this game for you guys, to everybody. Let's Let's go, Max. 
You heard it, Eduardo Escobar. Where's Let's Sha go, Mets. Where's Shakira when you need her? Where's Shakira? <laughs> Yo, two, uh, two quick notes that Ross brought up on the yes. the Mets Brave series to come tomorrow, right? So, do we know where the game is being played? I've heard nothing. I, I saw um, Tim Healy sound on a tweet this morning saying Friday night the percentage of precipitation in Atlanta is like six percent. This is all a bunch of smoke and mirrors there, to beat us in the division. There's an update from Mark Bowman. He's an, an insider for the Braves. He says mm -hmm. the latest forecasts indicate rain won't be an issue during the with the series. Okay. So we'll see. Do you imagine though there's no <clears> rain but like hurricane winds? Alonso gets into one, it blows back into foul territory. <laughs> Like, you, you remember when we were kids, Madden had that mini game where you could, like, kick a 100-yard field goal in hurricane wind? Oh. Remember that? Right. Yes. Yeah. On core memory. There you go. There you but, like, I feel like that's going to be Alonzo <laughs> trying to hit down to hit liners in the gap. Though. It'll go way out to left and blow all the way to the right field foul pole. Well, if that happened, if that happened, <laughs> if that happened all weekend, man. Yeah. So, say, here's the, here's the breakdown. So, mm -hmm. if the Mets win three out of three, they sweep, they clinch the division on Sunday. If they win two out of three, like Ross was talking about, their magic number would be one heading into the final series. So they just mm -hmm. have to win one game, and boom, you're in the you're in the National League East champions. So you're saying <clears throat> if the Mets win, even if, unless the Mets sweep, they're going to clinch likely at home. If they do it, all, all they have to do is if they don't sweep the Braves, they lose two out of three, they win two out of three, whatever. Yep. They're going to clinch it back at City Field. You're saying is what's going to happen most likely. Let's buy the tickets. Let's Honestly, go. can we just buy tickets to all three uh, games and sell the ones that we don't need later? Wow. If they clinch in the first game, we'll sell the last oh, two. I want to go Monday, Tuesday. I want to go Monday. Go See, if, if they don't clinch, I'm going back. Yeah. I'm with you. But I'm with you. We, we have to buy tickets now and then. Honest? Because mm. After the go show, up. we'll talk. Yeah. We'll all talk after the show. we got to get Mets tickets like now. WHPC, the city feels. Yes. Facts. Take Ross with us. Yes. <laughs> oh, that, that's a, Ross is the Brian Dable. Carry Ross on like a shrine like they did with the pharaohs back in Egypt. <laughs> kind, of like, kind of like on our shoulders. <laughs> yeah, Ross Ross Levine walking and went, look, look, the four of us are carrying Pharaoh Pharaoh Levine, cotton people. candy or hot dogs, please. Uh, Pharaoh Levine, come on. Pharaoh Levine. Prophet. Prophet. He's the prophet. <laughs> Remember when I said, Matt, mm -hmm. I think it was two weeks ago, yeah. all the Mets... Again, they just have to win one game. If they win one and mm -hmm. lose two, it won't be the worst thing because yeah. winning one game ensures the Mets have a, uh, right now, the Mets have a 9-7 and seven record against Atlanta. Mm -hmm. They win one game, they win the season series. Now, mm -hmm. the tiebreaker um, scenario we talked about, it's that's head imperative. Head, right? Head-to-head? Head? Yeah, head-to-head. Head. Okay, Mets good. Braves, head-to-head, 9-7. Head, head, nine, nine Mets, seven Braves. And if they lose the series, they still clinch head-to-head head victory in the record. Yes, if they just okay. win one game. They can't get swept. Getting swept is, like, catastrophic. That would be, you deserve to lose the division if you go there and lose all three. Yeah. You deserve it. And with the Grom, Scherzer, and Bassett pitching, that cannot You happen. certainly deserve it that if you lose all three not, of those. Exactly. So, no matter who does what, you deserve it if your team doesn't win. Obviously, we want to see them at sweep or take two out of three, but winning one is imperative because if they mm -hmm. get swept, they lose a the tiebreaker, they trail by two games with three to play, so it's over. I'm, it's yeah. pretty much over. Yeah. So, it, every outcome... For the Mets is good, just don't get swept. All right. And another note for that series, uh, maybe y'all know already, um, just for everybody that doesn't know, Buck Showalter moving to Grom starting tomorrow. So he wants to get this. I like that. Get that win. That, and then don't worry about the res as much. That huge win we talked about, the Grom out there, get it over with as soon as possible. Then the next two games you're playing with house money. What's interesting to me is Bassett was Friday, DeGrom was Sunday. Yep. They swapped them for each other. Mm -hmm. Bassett got pushed to Sunday. I love Chris Bassett, but I feel like it's the perfect move. That you want perfect. your guy, DeGrom is ready. You want your best big gun, your guy, in that first game as the important one. Buck knows. Buck's the smartest baseball mind I've seen in the Mets dugout in a long time. Yeah, say DeGrom pitches great, which I expect them to. I know everybody's kind of down on Jacob DeGrom after the last start, but yeah. well, he's also, going to pitch I well. also feel like he'll come out of the end of this start with a lot more fire because of the Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You talk about the competitor this guy is? No, no yeah. question. The important thing to note is DeGrom did not keep out of the last start fairly early because they thought he's not getting any better. Why waste him? That's smart, though. Mm -hmm. They probably knew. They definitely knew his last start's going to be in Atlanta, which means you saved DeGrom's arm and give him the most rest you possibly can. And you saw shots of him last night in the dugout. Like, he is locked in. Guy's ready locked to go, in. ready for the pen and chase yeah. ahead. He is ready. So, say it's DeGrom versus Freed on Friday. Saturday, it's Scherzer versus the 20 win Kyle Wright. <laughs> I love how we always say a 20 game winner, it's, Kyle it's Wright. It's just important to it point out. It is true, but it's just a joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
and then you would have Charlie Morton against Chris Bassett. Those next two games, well, every game I feel like we have the advantage. Technically, Max Fried has a lower ERA than mm-hmm. Jacob DeGrom, but we all know it's going to be a the advantage. It's going to be a dogfight. It's why yeah. this division is so much fun to watch. I mean, first off, the Phillies might not even make the postseason, which, you know what? They helped Atlanta, so Philly, if you want to miss, go ahead. At least I could laugh my ass off at you. Later <laughs> on. Did you see the but, Marlins fans? The, Mar- the Marlins team themselves are on yeah, Twitter inviting s- Met fans <laughs> to buy <laughs> tickets in Miami. That's- hey, Mets, join us one time to just beat down the Braves. <laughs> Yo, don't play around with the September Marlins. The September Marlins. It feels like you. every year. Last night we as- saw that. We won, but we saw it. For as long as I've been alive, the Marlins have just been... S- Annoying as hell in September, which means they won't. Every year. Which means they won't help us in the next series when they play uh, wa- in uh, Atlanta because it's I, October. They may want to annoy October Atlanta fans. No, oh, he's no, right. No. Yeah, the October Marlins just don't exist, so oh. that's a good point. But um, <laughs> no, but yeah, that's why this division is so much fun to watch. You expect, I mean. Obviously, you want the Mets to win it by a long shot, but you know, in the back of your head, it's like this is this perfectly sums up what this division was. It's a dogfight. You're down to the last. It literally, this series is it. This will determine it. it the postseason came yep. early. It's fitting yep. that it's in October, but um, no, nah, it'll be fun to watch. I mean, you can only hope that you know our aces outduel their aces. I guess you could say. Absolutely, but, and we'll, we'll, we'll all the aces are on the table. We'll see who comes yeah. out with the win, right? Now, I want to do one last note on baseball, and that is uh, the AL Central was clinched by the Cleveland Guardians last night, thus eliminating... Minnesota! Uh, Anyhow, uh, let's get the football now. You are listening to WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Matt Leonard, Josh Umahi, Brayden Daniello, Antonio Gonzalez, and Nico each. Now let's get to our friend Tua, who Ross Levine brought up on the phone call. And he, he will be in Cincinnati tonight playing against Joe Burrow and the Bengals. The Bengals will be wearing my favorite uniform, head to toe. I mean, helmet to cleats in all of sports. They are finally got the white tiger helmets going with the white tiger unis. The pants, it's all set up for them to win by like yep. 20. Mid. One and two has never looked so beautiful. I can't wait to see that game tonight. It's going to be great. Uh, one thing I'm confu- a little concerned about, though, is uh, being a, um, a Jamar Chase owner. See him go against oh, like, Xavier Howard. Um, I'm sorry, Xavier Howard played lights out against the Bills. I don't know if you saw it or not. He, did. he was doing really good stuff there. He last did, week. absolutely. Uh, but I mean, bottom And also, line on top is... of that, Joe Burrow's got no time because he's been sacked 15 times this season. That Melvin means Ingram's having a great weeks. year in Miami. Melvin Ingram's doing insane things. He just won Defensive Player of the Month, so he's having a great year. It's, I'm definitely interested to see how this game goes. I don't know. Why did they announce Players of the Month, by the way, before the month is over? Why did they do that? All I'm saying is that the rookie of the month being Chris Lave was insane to me. All right, I love Chris Lave, but Drake London, I'm sorry, Drake London. Definitely gets it over to Chris Olave. But, I, like, why are we announcing this when it's, like, September 29th, right? Another, good question. Another good question. I feel like, so, is, is Sunday so part of September? Am I wrong? Drake London. Drake, yes. Drake London. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm sorry. Have you not seen uh, Drake London? Now, Have you not seen Chris Olave? Just last week. That's about it. Have you seen the first week? I didn't. <laughs> oh! That's all I'm saying about that. So, all right. So, you're going to get some, a Falcon some love. We all know. That's why Drake London <laughs> ain't win that award. He, he ain't worthy. Look at the colors he's wearing. He ain't worthy. He ain't Look at worthy. The colors he's wearing. Wow. Oh. Always goes back to color every time. Yeah. <laughs> why does everything have to be about color, man? You, why you does everything have to be about that? Why is that the issue? Listen, can we go back to the question about Jared Goff, all right? Because who, who is, is going to be beating? Who's going to outscore Jared Goff? <laughs> who's going to beat Goff? Is, I was all who's beating know. Goff? Who's beating Goff? Let me Goff. actually let me actually see. <laughs> let me actually see who are the Dolphins playing the Lions oh. this year? Because I have at some point they must as the lead to a truther, right? Mm-hmm. The two a truther. Yeah, I'm you're the head of two and on. Yeah, I'm a two a truther. Did you did you think it was safe to come back? Did you what did you feel about that about him coming back after that? Well, he was still drawing dimes. His brain was bleeding. Good for him. His brain was like literally bleeding, but he was drawing dimes out there. He was. He was. Josh, well, had, the be- Josh had the best point I heard about it. It wasn't even on the air. It was on Sunday. We were watching the game together. Mm-hmm. And Josh um, had a great point about that. And that was, if Tua lost that game, even by one, uh, like a last second field goal, we'd be here in no end of, why was Tua in there? <laughs> no, but because no, the Dolphins yeah. won, nobody cares. <laughs> I think Tua came back with his right hand. I don't know. I think he, he got smarter or something. Yeah. I, don't know what happened. I feel like they were like, you know, they, that's what they, they flipped the videos <laughs> to make Tua look more natural as a quarterback. Tua came out and thought he was a righty and started throwing dimes as a righty. <laughs> He came back and started using 11% of his brain, like Michael Beasley did. Mm. See, he ate some Vaseline like Stephon Marbury. <laughs> yes. Stop the brain bleed. I'm telling y'all, that might, Went superhuman. that might be the cure. Eat some Vaseline. Yeah, I'm telling you. Us here at WHBC Sports Talk must encourage everybody, go eat some Vaseline. Oh, uh, well, no. <laughs> from all no, of us here. No, from no, all no, of us. No, everybody no. that works at 90.3 WHBC, go eat some Vaseline. You'll get superpowers. Maybe put some on I'm your lips. I'm talking to you, you lips kids. are quite chapped. 
<laughs> I'm looking at everybody out there in the fall weather. All right, you're getting some crusty yeah, lips. Right? Yeah, I've, chap, seen, I'm seen some, like, yeah. I've seen some instances of that throughout the campus. Like, you got to get the like, yeah, Get the Vaseline yeah. out on the lips. Yeah, come on, come on. Any type of lip residue. Ingest Vaseline. Don't any way you can. No, no, not the eating. Inject it into your veins. On your lips is fine. Just don't don't go any further than that. You know what I mean? That, no, no. Unless no. you're talking about Matt Leonard, which, <laughs> which encourages you to freaking basically vodka chuck the bottle of Vaseline. <laughs> Inject yourself in your veins. Matt, Matt, Matt's dinner, he'll have some steak out there, some collard greens. Actually, I mean, what do we got in the fridge? Huh? Vaseline. Like, you, you can't keep it in the fridge. It's, it's, it's not good cold. Oh, it doesn't go in the fridge. It's not, it's good it's not cold. tasty cold. No, it's not some, the same cold. Instead mm-hmm. of some mashed potatoes with a steak, he has vas- just a glob of Vaseline <laughs> on the plate. It's, That's it's instead, of, instead of gravy, he's got the Vaseline. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, let me get back who, to Tua. Who, 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 who do we got tonight, Tua or Burrow, in their whole respective teams? Let, let me give Tua. you some Tua truther stats right now. Please so, do. Two and on. Go ahead. <laughs> two and on. Yards per pass attempt NFL quarterbacks in 2022. 9.1 Jalen Hurts, MVP favorite. Yep. Mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson, nine at nine, exactly. Mm-hmm. And 8.9. That would be ahead of Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Tua. Tua Tunga by Lola. That's yards per attempt, right? Yes, yards per attempt. Yards right. per attempt for the guy that can't throw deep. But anyway. <laughs> uh, How many attempts does he have compared to the other guys? Uh, see, now you're splitting hairs. He's splitting hairs. <laughs> he, he doesn't need that many attempts. <laughs> exactly. He gets the job done. Go he throws 50, attempts that he has. He throws 50 Go. yard touchdowns every time he releases the ball. It's a fact. Yes. Every time that ball comes out of his hand, a 50 yard bomb to Tyreek Hill. Exactly. Prove this is how it goes. Prove me wrong. Yeah, like watch the Dolphins game. That's what happened. It's going to happen tonight. Yep. Best win percentage in the NFL since oh, week 11 oh, last year. Oh, there's nope. this year. I mean, there's two 3 0 teams. Don't give me that. Since week 11 last year. <laughs> You got Mahomes at eight and two, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom Brady at nine and two, all right. And the, and the guys who who uh, won in spite of Brian Flores at what record? <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Hurts at seven and one, yeah. and that would be at number one. Tua Tonga by Lua. Tua. So, so you mean to tell me that he he's third in yards per attempt in twenty twenty two? What's his record in that time? I'm just curious. Nine undefeated? And nine and one. Nine, oh, okay. nine and one. You cannot dispute a nine and one record. You I'm, I'm, I'm you beyond. Can't. You just can't. You and can't. by the way, can't. most important stat: Tua nine three and one against the spread. No, oh, that, that's a big one. <laughs> that's a huge one. Who's the favorite tonight? Who's going who's gonna to cover with the favorite? Bengals, three and a half. Are oh, Dolphins are tonight. covering oh. that if they, if they don't yeah, win. Yeah, Dolphins yeah. are covering that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a lock of the week. So. Oh, it's helping also. Nah, nah. Two, we got to make you one of those. Yeah. It was helping to him more than ever is the people he's throwing to. I mean, you have a great one two punch with oh Waddle. I mean, I talk about mm-hmm. Howard a lot. Mm-hmm. You cover Hill, who's going to cover Waddle? That's the problem, I Eli think. Eli Apple can't be everywhere. He, he can only be oh, some places. God. Eli Apple yeah. can go a cover, cover someone in Madden See, 23. You... <laughs> Forget about freaking Eli Apple. Tyreek Hill's been waiting for him, too. He said he's coming for him. He said he owes him. <laughs> no. Excited to see what happens to Eli Apple. Yeah, I mean, I, I, how did Eli Apple get crossed up in all this BS? Do we know where it started? He, you don't remember that? He, 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 he posted was, about it. He it was, was his Twitter thugging. He That's was what the he was one. Doing. I yeah. didn't see that. He was Twitter the thugging. Greatest, yep. No, the greatest thing ever was going on his Twitter the day after. The, no, not even the day. The the hour after the Bengals lost the Super Bowl, <laughs> the that Giants awesome. fans that were trolling him. And basically, every I don't want to say even Giants, it was every Cuff. fan base. <laughs> He got burned by Cooper no Cup and everybody Eli else. Apple. OBJ, everybody. everybody. Matt, you could probably burn Eli Apple. If I'm being I'm honest. I'm not dissing you. I'm no, not no, no, dissing no. you. That, I'm being that, see- I mean, whether you're dissing me or not, I have no speed. I'll admit it. I can still probably run past Eli Apple or at least at least shake him enough to get open. <laughs> he never was a superstar. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, 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 It's, it's yeah. just so true. I mean, the Giants. Let's talk about the New York Giants drafting that guy, what, 10th overall? Yeah. You know yeah. what? And then my yeah. Saints trading for him mm-hmm. like we were doing something. Mm-hmm. Lost his playoff games, and now he's a Bengal. Not only that, but lost the, Giants, the, Super Bowl. the Giants went ahead and drafted DeAndre Baker also. Oh. An- another mistake. Oh. At, 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 you know, defensive back. Yeah. DeAndre Baker. Oh, my God. That was Gettleman, right? Yeah. That was, I'm yeah. looking at it right now. 2016 draft. <laughs> Gettleman is a criminal. Terrible. Oh my God. I thought Gettleman picked these all guys the on Giants, purpose to just get away with all this All crap. the Giants' mistakes are tied back to Gettleman. Now, every time, now Josh, every time. Josh, are, 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 we, we tested your draft knowledge off the air a few days ago. Yes. Can you give me <laughs> any of the nine names that were picked before the 10th pick in 2016 that would have all been better choices than Eli Apple? Well, Ezekiel Elliott's got to be one of them. Ezekiel Elliott was four to Dallas. Uh, 2016. 2016. Jared, Goff, about, Jared Goff. Jared Goff was yeah. one. And now, now everyone is beating Goff. Yes. So that wasn't a good first overall pick. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Number Carson, two, yeah, Wentz. Carson Wentz. Um, Three just got hurt. Just got hurt. Just got hurt last week. Chargers. Bosa. Oh, Bosa. Uh, Bosa. Thank you, right, Nico. Right, right. Bosa. Four was Zeke. Five is regarded as the best corner in the game, not named Eli Apple. Marshall Lattimore. No. Oh, wait, he went at 27. Regarded as the best. Regarded as the best. Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, I said regarded as because he's, he's looking like Eli Apple Mid. this year. 
Mid. Six is Ronnie <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> He's pretty mid this year. <laughs> Ronnie Stanley went to the Baltimore Ravens. San Francisco, San Francisco took to Forrest Buckner. Jack Conklin followed by Leonard Floyd. Then Eli Apple's 10. Now, tell me if he meets the, 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 the company of any of those names before him. Right. Even Carson Wentz. I'd rather have Wentz on my team than Eli Apple. <laughs> I'd rather have Wentz played corner than Eli Apple. All right, listen, Wentz, <laughs> Wentz, did, Wentz did pretty bad last week, all right? But those first two weeks, I want Wentz he was, to play he was balling him. out. Yeah, I feel he like, was. And if you look I, at the no, Colts I, with, you. I, with I Matt Ryan, the show. if you look at the Colts with Matt Ryan, they, they look really silly right now without having Wentz. And seeing Wentz over there in Washington mm-hmm. redacted, I mean, Washington Commanders, where they call oh themselves nowadays. God. Redacted. That's uh, you know, it, it's, it's definitely interesting to see the, the whole Carson Wentz story because if you look at the Colts, they're looking like, like hopefully they stick with Matt Ryan and they don't do the same thing they did last year, which is get, you know, panic, hit the hit the quit button and then get rid of Matt Ryan, next quarterback. Mm-hmm. Unless they do really bad and then they end up getting, you know, a chance at a, at a rookie, you know, someone that, you know, yeah. may or may not come from Alabama quarterback. I don't know anybody. Or Ohio you know, State would be fine. Or Ohio State, you know. So we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Quickly, g- give me a game pick and a score. Go. Third down football. Oh, on the spot. Okay. I'm going to get the final uh, thoughts. We got to rush it. I'm sorry. Bengals. Win? Win. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just score. We'll just do that. Oh, Bengals. Bengals 34. Dolphins 31. Oh, I like that. Brayden, you even want to give a shot? Yeah, sure. Uh, Dolphins 24. Um, Bengals 17. Okay. All right. I got Bengals 20. Dolphins 17. And the Bengals need to win because the jerseys are, are fresh. All right, the they, they have to win. They have to. Win. Nico, how many touchdowns is Tua throwing, and how much is he going to win by? Uh, five touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> and the score will be 35-34 in favor of the Dolphins. Oh, Ooh. I like that. Uh, that's a hot take. I like that. The Tua is going to throw all five. And, oof, yes, woo, that is going to come up short. I'm going. Bengals are winning this one. I'm going to go 27 to 20. Bengals. Now, bungles. quickly, we'll do, we'll do what? <laughs> the bungles. <laughs> we'll do final thoughts, Nico. You, you and your bungle, do your final thought. Uh, big game for the Rangers tonight. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> Antonio. <laughs> uh, I hopefully Chase Edmonds gets into the, involved wow. more like he did last week. Got a touchdown for once. I want to see more Chase Edmonds. More wow. running game from Miami. What Braden Daniello. Jimmy Vesey for president. That's all. <laughs> Josh Mahi. Also, shout out Nas. Escobar season has returned. Shout out Eduardo Escobar. <laughs> I love you, boy. Uh, <laughs> you. Chloe Kardashian. Oh, what? what? <laughs> oh, no. Trust me, guys. She's yeah, hitting, she's she's hitting that basketball. With Tristan Thompson. Yes. Everybody wants oh, a piece of Escobar. Oh, wait, what? So it's reported that Chloe Kardashian has developed Mid. signs of brain trauma due to Tristan Thompson's cheating. Oh, my God. I was oh, joking. No. I was joking. No, I'm I'm <laughs> no, this is we, serious. We talk about all the football players that get we, CTE from like hard hits on the field. Who knew that you can get CTE from cheating? You see, you see, Josh, we will, me personally, I won't let that affect me. That's just me. Oh, right. me too. Like, Here's uh, <laughs> I want to get more into that if we have time off air, at least tomorrow. <laughs> but now, my final thought is this. We always talk about Ross, Ross Levine knowing what's going to happen, right? Why have we not monetized on this and even made it a segment for ourselves? We're going we're gonna to make Ross a betting segment and just call it The Profit. Why have we not thought of this yet? Ross deserves. Ross, Ross is the prophet, and you make a profit from Ross. your bets on Ross's bets. Ross, please predict for the Mets to win the division, please. Ross, go Everything down. you say happens. My final word of the day is just Ross Levine. I'm booking you a flight to Atlanta for this entire weekend. You're staying whether you like it or not. All right. Two that, things. Yeah. Uh, Profumidita is up next. I was going to ask. That's right. <laughs> and uh, 3.30 on Football Friday, by the way. Yes, 3.30, 3.30 tomorrow. We are on 3.30 for Football Friday. 3.30 p.m., idiots. 3.30 p.m. <laughs> if you tune in at 3.30 a.m., wow. you deserve to miss our show. We don't want you as an audience member. Exactly. Um, I'm true. kidding, of course. Anybody tune in, please. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> thank please you for God, listening. Please. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you for listening to WHBC Sports Talk from Nico Each, Antonio Gonzalez, Brayden Daniello, and Josh Umahi. I'm Matt Leonard saying thank you for listening on The Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHBC.